Uh, the topic of today's webinar is Google Analytics Understanding the Data Correctly. Uh, the session will uh, include a Q&A section of the presentation, so please uh, put your questions during the session and they will all be answered afterwards. Uh, and for those who have joined our online event for the first time, I'll make a quick overview of who Promoter Company are and why we think we are entitled to speak on this topic. First of all, Promoter is headquartered in Ukraine, but we've been operating online since 2004, providing complex internet marketing services worldwide, namely SEO, um, uh, search engine optimization, conversion rates optimization, pay-per-click advertising, and social media marketing. Uh, for more than nine years now, um, uh, we've gained a Google AdWords partnership uh, and seminars with those badges, best in search badges for SEO and PPC as well as a couple of nominations by Promotion World Magazine. Out of our 100 in-house experts, 32 hold Google Analytics uh, Qualified Individual Certificate and around 21 Individual AdWords Certificate. We are also very proud to be working now with more than 70% of all most prominent e-commerce sites in our country, and we are also very proud to have been successfully cooperating with brands found worldwide, such as Kingston, Belongi, Bewee, Namecheap, Woodbus, and others. Uh, so it all gives us enough experience and exercise to share with you today. Uh, and now, uh, I would like to introduce today's speaker, Helen Buchko. Um, uh, she is a very enthusiastic marketeer, and she will actually share with you uh, her best practices in Google Analytics. Okay, thank you, Anne. Uh, so I'm very glad to see you all today. Thanks for being here. And so let's get started. So the topic of today's webinar is Google Analytics, how to understand the data correctly. So today we are going to give you an introduction to Google Analytics. We are going to show you how to set up, to set up goals in Google Analytics, uh, how to uh, understand the principal metrics of Google Analytics and how to integrate Webmaster Tools and Google Analytics account. Also, we are going to give you an overview of top eight Google Analytics custom reports. These are powerful reports that will be able to give you more insight in short time and will help you under better understand what is going on with your online business. So, first of all, why should businesses uh, use Google Analytics because Google Analytics has such a great amount of data which shows uh, virtually every bit of your online marketing campaign. So by looking at Google Analytics data you can find out the weak place, find out about weak places of your online project. Uh, you can improve your strategy, you can see what is working on your website and what is not. And of course, based on this, you can make more well-grounded decisions about the future strategy. So in order to get the most of Google Analytics data, we would advise you to customize the account to your business needs. How can it be done? First of all, you may set up goals in Google Analytics. So what, how, uh, how does Google Analytics consider goals? A goal could be defined as a critical event for your business which occurs during the user visit on the website and such critical event should somehow contribute to your generate to your overall income somehow it should, should help to generate it should help you generate this income so in google analytics all goals could be divided in four groups it's url destination goal time on site goal pages per visit goal and an event goal. So let's look into them more in detail. The first type of goal is URL destination goal. So let's take the case, uh, for example, we are showing you the example from Promoda. Uh, so we think that when the visitor, when the user visits the About Us page, it is critical for us because it shows some kind of user intention to interact with our company. So how, what should we do then? We copy this URL 
and um, and set and put it into the set in the goal into the goal settings. We want Google Analytics to report in conversion every time when the user visits this page. So how should we do this? We navigate to admin panel in Google Analytics account, choose the profile for which we would like to create the goal, and then we in the goal tab we click create a goal. Here we paste this URL. Uh, please pay the attention that we paste only this part which goes after the domain name and then we may set up also a value for this goal. A value is set up for non-e-commerce goals and if you have any way, if you know any way how you can indirectly to calculate the value of this goal, you can set up it here. Also, uh, please note that you can set up one URL, exact URL, and that will be option equals to or you can choose two other options. For example, it could be begins with. It means that after the of after this about us URL, any other characters could be appended. So more variations of URL. And the most flexible variant is regular expressions. With the regular expressions, you can build some patterns of URLs which uh, could be defined as goal trigger. Uh, regular expression is the most flexible but a little bit tricky part, so we advise you to read Google's regular expression guide to find out how to, how to make the use of them. Uh, so, so a little bit more examples of URL destination goals. Uh, you can uh, set up as this goal any page, any URL which indicates the process completion. For example, it could be confirmation page when the user has signed up for your email newsletter. Or it could be checkout page indicating that the user had made, has made a purchase and so on. Now we are moving to the next type of uh, uh, goal is time on site goal. So let's take the case uh, that you have a large content website and you are interested that the visitor stays on your website as much time as possible. Then you can tell Google Analytics to show the conversion when the user stays on the website more, more than a definite period of time. Uh, so you set up more than in the goal uh, settings and then you can track this type of conversions. There is another situation when this type of goal can be used. For example, uh, it is support customer support websites. In this case, website owner is interested that the user gets the answer as quickly as possible and uh, then he interested uh, that the user spends the least of the, of the time on the site. In this case, he might uh, set up less than time period of time and track this kind of goal. The next kind of goal, the third one, pages per visit goal. It slightly reminds us the previous one because it also can be used to measure user engagement with your website. So for example, you are interested that the user visits as much pages per visit as possible because in this case he might see as many banner ads put on your website as possible and you will get more income. So uh, in this case you set up that a definite number of pages viewed per visit should trigger a conversion for your website. And now we have come to the last type of goal, it's an event goal. An event goal, different kinds of event may occur on your website. Uh, for example, ebook downloaded, free trial account created, software downloaded. In all these cases, you may ask Google Analytics to show the conversion when such event takes place. How to do that? Uh, you need to set up uh, an event, you need previously to set up what you consider to be an event on your website and then fill in these fields in the goal settings. Uh, setting up an event a little bit more challenging than uh, setting up another types of goals, so we would advise you to go to the Google Analytics event tracking guide to find out how to do this more in detail. 
So now we are finished with goals and how to, where to look for goal completion information. Actually, goal completion information is shown in many, many reports in Google Analytics, but uh, there is also a separate section which shows specifically this information. So you just, on the left panel of, Google, of your Google Analytics account, you navigate to the conversion section, select overview, and see, and see this kind of information. So you can see how many goals on which or for which pages have been completed. You can see the source, the medium, are also information for these metrics. And if you click view full report, you can access this kind of information. What is great that you can see the goal value if you if you set up a value for your goal, for example, as I shown as I showed a uh, goal value for URL destination. And also you can choose secondary dimension. For example, which goal uh, has been visited, which page has been visited before this uh, goal has been completed. Uh, why, uh, why it is possible? Because in one goal you can set up, you can set up a set of goals and uh, this set, one set of goals may contain several another goals, a little bit more, a little bit smaller goals. So now, when we have set up uh, goals for our Google Analytics, there is another way how we can customize our account. We can also set up e-commerce tracking. So, why setting up e-commerce tracking is helpful? Because it allows you, to, allows you to track your business outcome. Of course, you may say that you have special software account, soft, accounting software which allows you to do the same thing. But what is great about Google Analytics is that you can associate the revenue you receive with the traffic sources which contributed to this revenue. So with this information, you can answer the question, who gets the credit? Which sources are worth to invest more and which are not? So how to set up e-commerce tracking? The first step, you should enable e-commerce tracking in your profile settings. Again, navigate to admin panel, choose the profile, and then choose profile settings. Here you just simply need to state yes and e-commerce website. The step, the step number two is to embed Google Analytics tracking code to some page which contains transaction details. For example, it could be receipt page. The, the code in this case will look like this. Uh, this is a model, a pattern, uh, there are required fields and, an op and some optional fields. If you take a real life example with real data about transaction, uh, the Google Analytics code will be looking something like this. Uh, so, after you have set up the e-commerce tracking, you can also see the data about, uh, about uh, these processes in your Google Analytics account. Navigate to the conversion section and select e-commerce. There you will be able to see sources of the traffic, and revenue which they generated. Very convenient and very useful. Also, you will be able to see, for example, if you look at the products section, you will be able to see quantity sold, unique purchases, product revenue, as well as average price. All of these can be, again, associated with the traffic sources, which is like very, very helpful for your case. Good news that if your website is non-e-commerce, you still can track the sale with the help of e-commerce tracking. You, in this case, you will just need to make a little, some little tweaks in Google Analytics code. You can set up constant value for some required fields, which you do not have in your case, and track only the purchase amount. So in this case, you will be able to make the use of this fabulous feature as well. So after we have customized our Google Analytics account, we may start to look into the reports. What are the principal metrics and how to understand them? So the first one, the first one is visits. Visits are used to measure traffic volume, so, it is very, so that's why it is a very important metric. Usually businesses are interested in receiving 
as high number of target visits to the website as possible. So, by measuring visits, uh, number of visits, uh, you can understand how successful your online marketing campaign is. You can compare traffic volume of different periods of time, and you can see which days are the most popular days are among your site visitors, and find out whether your business is seasonal. All this information could be used for your future marketing strategy and uh, your future marketing steps. So this is how the traffic volume is displayed in Google Analytics, by number of daily visits. Page views, it's another Google Analytics metric, and it could be defined as an instance of a page being loaded by a browser. It is also the case when a Google Analytics tracking code is executed on your page. Uh, page viewers are helpful because uh, they help to understand how the user is engaged with your website content and how this content is, is relevant to the user needs. Uh, very frequently, when you will be looking at page views metric, you may also see a unique page view metric. The difference is that just the page view metric, it contains repeated views or a single page, while the unique page view metric doesn't contain this information, only uh, unique page views. So, the page views information you can see, for example, in the content section on the left panel. You navigate to site content, all pages, and you can see which pages of your website receives the most page views. So it, it may mean that these pages give the most relevant information to the users, for example, and you may uh, enhance them more to receive more visits. And also you can find out which pages receive the least of page views, and probably there is some user um, some usability issues on these pages and, and you need to improve them more. And now the last metric which we would like to talk about is traffic sources. Traffic sources is a very, very powerful metric because it's what you should be looking at if you are, are running your online marketing campaign, for example. Uh, traffic sources is helpful to analyze uh, by comparing different traffic sources. For example, um, if you compare different traffic sources, you can see what, are, what is the best performing traffic source, where you can invest more, and which uh, traffic source probably is underrated. Um, and also you can see what is working in your marketing campaign and what is not. So all traffic sources in Google Analytics is divided in three sections. It is direct traffic, referrals, and search. Uh, you can see the whole traffic overview in Google Analytics under the, in the traffic sources section under overview. Here you can see all these sources and which sources has driven the biggest number of visits, for example. And then you may proceed to uh, consider the each traffic source separately because it's very, very helpful. So uh, direct traffic, it represents visitors who arrived at your website by clicking on the bookmark or by typing the URL directly into their browser. So this is how the direct traffic report looks like in Google Analytics. Uh, it shows landing pages at which users arrived. It shows how many visits they, are, they received as well as number of pages view, viewed per visit, average visit duration, new visits, and bounce rate. About bounce rate, bounce rate is a very powerful metric, but we will cover it a little bit more in detail later. So, uh, how to uh, type this information with the goals conversion? Simply navigate to upper panel above the chart, above the graph, and select any of the goal sets. So, for example, goal set 1. Then you will be able to see that this particular kind of uh, traffic source contributed to this percent of goal conversion. Then, 
we proceed to the next type of the traffic, it is referral traffic. Referral traffic is very large part, it may be a very large part of your website traffic, so it's important to consider it in detail. It includes any web sources that link to your website. It could be websites with uh, your banner ads, it could be links from blogs, it could be affiliate program links and many, many other examples. So, uh, why it's useful to measure referral traffic? Because you can figure out what websites send you the most traffic uh, and what landing pages users er at what landing pages users arrive when they are sent by this referral by these referrals and also you can find out how users interact with the page content that you show them so referrals report could be obtained also in the traffic sources section uh, under referrals so here you can see as in our example, you can see different sources of traffic which refer to our website, how many visits they generated, and whether these visits were relevant or not, uh, whether the content which we showed to the user were relevant or not to them, we can see with the help of bounce rate. Uh, of course, sometimes it might be not enough to see just the uh, domain which refer to your website, you may also want to see which pages refer to your, uh, to your website. For example, you posted a link uh, in, on some forum and you would like to know not the domain name but exa the exact URL which referred to your website, which, uh, which post worked. So it has worked. So in this case, you click on any domain name in the previous chart, in the previous table and you will be taken to so-called referral path. There you will be see um, URLs which directly refer to your website and again all other metrics which is are, are relevant to this information. Search engine traffic. So if you are if you are running an ACO campaign or if you are running a paid search campaign you should be looking exactly at this uh, traffic source. Search engine traffic is divided into parts, organic and paid. So if you run both type of campaigns, uh, be careful to distinguish them to s and consider them separately. So search engine traffic analysis helps to find what uh, search engines work the best for your case, what keywords send you the most of traffic, and also you can compare SEO campaign and ad advertisement campaign, their effectiveness and see whether it's which kind of campaign it's worth to continue in future. So search engine traffic overview, you can see it again in the traffic sources section and here if you choose traffic type you can see organic search and paid search and number of visits they generated for your case which is helpful. Uh, what is great is that you can also view this uh, data by source of by traffic source for example Google, Yahoo, Facebook and so on. You can also see keywords, you can also see the information by the keywords and also by campaign and other metrics. Just choose any one you need and see the corresponding information. Uh, so now we navigated, we have come to organic traffic overview. Here we can see the uh, traffic report divided uh, by the keywords, by the keywords and how many visits each keyword has driven in our case. Then, paid traffic overview. If you would like to see this kind of, to analyze this kind of traffic, you simply click on the paid traffic and here you choose whether campaign, medium source or keyword interests you and uh, you can see then how much visits, how many and whether, and whether these visits were relevant or not, how, how many visits any of these campaigns has driven for your website. So when we are done with this metric, we would like to uh, draw your attention to the fact that it is important, probably it's more useful,
to integrate Webmaster Tools account with your Google Analytics account. So how to do that? Um, generally, if uh, you have not set up this kind of integration, uh, you just you see just this kind of information if you navigate to this section, search engine optimization. But if you uh, set up integration, you will be able to see queries, landing pages, geographical summary, and other information. Another way, why, another thing why it's helpful is because you can see Google Analytics information from Webmaster Tools account as well. So it's like very, very convenient. So how to set up this kind of integration? Uh, you, for example, you can actually you can do this in two ways. You can set up it being on Google in Google Analytics account or you can set up it from your Webmaster Tools account. So I'm show you I, I'm going to show you the second way. You choose the site name here, your website name here, you click manage site and select Google Analytics property. Then you will be taken to this kind of page and you select a web property which you would like to associate with the account and then you are done. Uh, then if you navigate to our search engine optimization section, you see queries, landing pages, geographical summary and other relevant and useful information about your online project. So now we are, have come to a very interesting part of our presentation. It's a top eight powerful Google Analytics custom reports. So why do we need custom reports? Because custom reports it is are a short card which helps you get more actionable insight in less time. Custom reports they are more adjusted to your business needs so give you more exact information and help you answer questions which you have specifically. So the report number one is not provided report. So what is it in a nutshell? Uh, there is such an issue with the uh, not provided segment. When uh, the user is used, when the user is signed with any of Google services and performs a search in Google, uh, the keyword the user is has been using uh, to perform this search is not showed in Google Analytics. In fact, Google Analytics doesn't show any kind of information about these users. It just aggregates it in one segment, not provided. But since uh, more and more people are using Google, uh, are using Google services and uh, this segment is growing, it's vital to understand somehow the behavior of these users. So what, ser so what online marketers advise to do in this case? They advise to um, to, un uh, to understand this not provided segment with the help of landing pages. So when, if, we if we understand at which landing pages users arrive from non-provided segment, we can see uh, what is the user intention, whether it's satisfied with the page at which uh, they arrive, and also we can, we can suggest the keywords which could have been used by the user uh, to arrive at this certain page. It's much more clear than just have non-provided segment. So how to do this? How to hack this kind of information? Navigate to admin panel, select the profile for which you would like to create uh, this uh, kind of filter, select filters and click new filter. Here you need to uh, write the information something like this. Actually, you can write it exactly how it's written here, but if uh, it seems uh, to you a little bit overwhelming, we would advise you to read this e-consultancy post, which uh, talks more in detail about this kind of report. So basically, what we are telling here, what we are asking to do here, we are asking Google Analytics to tag the URLs at which uh, the user from non provided segment arrives every time he is, he, or he is arriving at our website. So if we uh, set up this kind of filter, the, all the new information about not provided segment will be, will be presented like this. 
For example, in this case, you can see at which landing, at what landing pages user arrived, uh, what was the bounce rate, average visit duration, average time on page, and other metrics. You can also select secondary dimension um, and sort this information the way you want. So definitely, you in this case, you will be able to give mar to get much more insight. Now we are moving on to the second report, report number two, it's branded vs non-branded traffic. So it is helpful when we want to see the effectiveness of our, of our promotion for non-branded non keywords. In this case, we want to filter somehow to exclude branded keywords. So how just to do that? Uh, just make the use of custom segments. So in this case, you need to navigate to Advanced Segments, click New Custom Segment, and write the next information. So we, we are asking Google to include uh, all the data, all the data from organic search. We select Medium, exactly matching organic. Then we want to exclude the information, exclude the not provided segment. Let's take this case. We write Exclude keyword exactly matching not provided and the last enter we we might want to do is we want to uh, we want to specify which keywords we are consider as a branded key as branded keywords so in this case we select exclude keyword and matching regular expression why we select matching regular expression because we are using this kind of five slash which allows us to write all the branded keywords in one row and simply state that if any of these keywords occurs, uh, it should be excluded from the organic traffic. After that, we click Save Segment and then in any case or from any account within one Google Analytics account, you can access this kind of report and apply it. So uh, this is the difference with which we receive when we apply this kind of uh, segment. So, for example, we are looking we are looking at the traffic at the uh, traffic performance number of visits and think like, okay, everything goes well. Our S SEO campaign doing is doing very well. Okay, but after we have uh, excluded branded keywords from the traffic, we see that. As it appears, traffic is a little bit lower than we expected because our about 30 visits per day, it was, they were accounted, uh, they accounted for uh, branded keywords. Now, uh, let's consider another report, report number three, it's visit with transactions. Visit with transactions report is very helpful because uh, you can get a picture of your visitor who uh, triggers the conversion, who buys uh, on your website or makes or does any a step action which is relevant, which is critical for your uh, business success. So how can you um, get this uh, picture of a client? You can see the region from which user has come. You can uh, see the language which has been used by the visitor, browser, screen resolution, and other information. Also, with this, with the help of this, with the, with this information, you can get an idea of users' behavior. So, for example, um, where they proceed further, whether they are satisfied and engaged with your content, and so on. So, how to apply this kind of report? In this case, you just need to make the use of standard default Google Analytics segments. You navigate to Advanced Segments and choose Visits with Transactions and click Apply. And that's what you obtain. You see the pie graph which shows the percentage of new visitors and of returning visitors. You can also see the number of visits corresponded to, corresponding to each type of language. You can also choose another metric to view this kind of da data. You can, you can choose browser, operating system, op uh, service provider, screen resolution. 
and if you want to get more figures, more data, you just click view full report and you are taken to this kind of table. Here you can choose secondary dimension, for example, we, we have chosen for our case country and territory. And also you can uh, specify the way you would like to view this data. You may specify that you would like to view it as a chart, as a pie graph, or as a bar chart. Report number four, which might come handy, is most profitable sources of traffic. Most profitable sources of traffic report allows you to see which traffic sources has driven the biggest revenue for your business and where, uh, where, is, where is the highest return on investment and on which traffic sources you should focus more in the future. So this kind of report could be set up in the following way. Navigate to the traffic sources section, select all traffic and then click e-commerce. In this case, you will be able to see this kind of table which shows, in the, which shows source and medium, traffic source and medium, uh, and e-commerce conversion rate. You can also see the average value which has been generated by each of these traffic sources and the number of transactions. So like, it's very helpful. If you want to see to rate these kind of sources by any of these metrics, just simply click on the column heading and the information will be put in order starting from the best performed sources. Then, uh, and this is how you can see that if you rate by, for example, e-commerce conversion rate. The best performed source comes first in, the, in, this, in this table. Report number five, funnel visualization and drops off. Why is this report very useful? Because, uh, firstly, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more what funnel is. Funnel could be defined as a, as a row of steps, as a sequence of steps, which you expect your user to take on the way to the conversion. So, it could, it's could be compared to little goals, which you set up for Google Analytics, in Google Analytics, and you expect the user to reach all these goals, and finally, uh, he, he may, he should reach the final, the, the biggest goal uh, for, for your website. Uh, so if you set up a uh, final visual, visualization, you may not only see the data, but you can also see the uh, visual picture of uh, this uh, conversion process. And you can see uh, the stages on, on which users abandon the conversion conversion path because um, naturally not all the users they start the convert they start the purchase and they finish it probably there is a button which is not working on your website or some uh, some another kind of usability issue and that's why they can't finish complete the purchase so with the help of this final visualization feature you will be able to identify these weak places so firstly to to get this picture, you need to set, up the uh, to set up the funnel. You navigate to admin, select the profile, and click goals. Then uh, you uh, set up the funnel. For example, in our case, for example, let's take the case of promoter. Um, users, we perceive that our potential customers contact us via email. But we think that the users might visit this page, contact us page, before they do, before they request co the contact. So we set up that for this goal, URL destination goal, email contact, there might be a step. There might be a step when the user visit, uh, when the user visits contact us page. So we write this kind of information. Uh, please note that you can add another steps, and actually there could be a lot of lot more steps which uh, you perceive users should take before they make the conversion, before they trigger the conversion. And uh, after you have set up the funnel, you can see this kind of information, this kind of image. Uh, it could be obtained in the conversion section 
final visualization. As you can see in this example, more over 900 people started the conversion, but only 450 finished it successfully. So here you can see at and what stages they left this conversion process. Uh, then you can check these pages and see whether something is going wrong with these pages. Report number six, bounce rate. So I have already mentioned several times this powerful metric and now we are going to um, give a better overview of this important metric. So bounce rate, it is the percent, percentage of visits that go only one page and after visit only one page and of, after this page they just exit the site and do not proceed to any other pages. Uh, bounce rate is used uh, to measure user engagement, how much, uh, the extent to which your website content is relevant to the user needs. And generally, and that's why generally a high bounce rate is considered as a negative sign because the visitor is not, doesn't find your website very uh, informative and relevant to their needs and he just leaves after viewing one, one page. So this kind of metric you can see in many, many reports. For example, you can navigate to the content section, select all pages and here you can see bounce rate. When you analyze bounce rate, it's very good to make the use of this uh, bar chart. For example, uh, we have selected landing pages and then we selected bar chart and what now we see the bounce rate of uh, different pages is compared to the site average. So here we can see that this page performs really bad and this page is not working as well. So probably there is some usability issues on this website, on these pages and we need to pay more attention to them and improve them and probably there will be the result. So bounce rate is a very important metric for usability specialists and is considered very, very, very often. So there is a case when high bounce rate uh, is not considered as a negative sign. For example, there, are, there is a certain group of websites uh, for which even 100% bounce rate is okay. Simply because uh, the, when the user visits the sites, he, he lands on the first on the page, he views uh, this page, he receives the information, the information they need and then he'll, he leaves completely satisfied. Uh, for example, it could be blogs. User has, has read the article and then leaves. So in this case, uh, you should pay attention. So before jumping into uh, bounce rate analysis, you should think of your website, what kind of website you have uh, and uh, whether high bounce rate is, is indeed a negative sign uh, for, uh, for your online project. Report number seven, mobile traffic. Uh, Today, during these days when mobile usage is growing uh, with the huge, uh, at the huge rate, it's, it's important to know what is going on with our mobile users because as a rule they are access, accessing our website from, um, from devices with smaller screens with lower uh, internet speed, so we should uh, we should definitely analyze this kind of traffic whether whether these whether these users have any kind of uh, problems. Uh, so if you apply mobile traffic report, you can get a clear picture of users uh, who are visiting your website. You can see a screen resolution, operating system, browser, and other metrics. Uh, attributed to this uh, source and also you can increase mobile traffic conversion rate simply by eliminating some problems which, uh, you, which you might uh, identify during this kind of analysis. So how to set up mobile traffic report? 
Again, navigate to Advanced Segments and select Mobile Traffic Report. Then click Apply. It's a default segment which is provided by Google Analytics. After you have applied this uh, report, we advise you to navigate to the audience and overview. Here you can see, for example, the data breakdown by language, by country and territory, by operating system, by service provider and other metrics. In our case, we have chosen screen resolution. We want to see whether users experience any, kinds, any kind of problems uh, <clears throat> when accessing from different uh, mobile devices. So in order to get this kind of information, we click View Full Report. And again, we select Bar Chart uh, so that to compare a bounce rate with the site average. So we see that users with these screen resolutions experience some problems probably because the bounce rate is is uh, high and that's why uh, after we have done this analysis, analysis we might uh, go to our website and uh, test it on, on the devices with these resolutions in order to see whether, uh, whether uh, it, uh, they have any kind of problems. Uh, okay, and now we have come to the last report for today this is report number eight, four zero O errors. Why we should why we should apply and make the use uh, of these kinds of report? Because um, four zero four errors are bad for your website for two for two main reasons. Firstly, because uh, users when they uh, run into the error pages, they uh, um, they might be uh, unsatisfied, they might experience negative, they might receive negative experience and they might leave the site if you don't, if you don't present any navigation and hints on how, what, on what to do further, they, they might just leave the website and not come there anymore. And the second reason why it's bad because if you if the number of error pages steadily grows on your website, it is, uh, it is a sign for Google and it may decrease the rankings of your website because of this technical problem. So to apply this kind of report, we, are, we advise to make a shortcut and just uh, make the use of advanced filter. Uh, we, uh, we are going to apply this filter with the help of the page title. So we need to apply this filter, we need to know the page title. We go to the page arrow page code, find the title, copy it, and then proceed to the content section. Here we choose all pages, and here we select page title. So there we receive the breakdown of pages with different page titles, and this is the time when we uh, apply the advanced uh, filter. Here we write that we would like to include the information about the pages with the page title which contains this, this information. And after that we click apply. What do we receive? We receive uh, a report showing us the number of, of uh, error pages. We see the dynamic of this, the trend of these pages, as well as we can see the bounce rate and if we uh, select secondary dimension we can see whether the user proceeds to any other pages for example. Uh, also you can see which pages generated, which URLs generated this arrow page. In this case you just need to click on this and you will be able to see all the pages uh, which the user typed or uh, clicked on and received an uh, error notice. So this kind of information you can see here with, this, with the help of this report. So now uh, we are finished with the custom reports and actually this is all which we would like to tell you today. Uh, one thing more which we would like to notice is that to note is that 
There is a very powerful um, tool provided by Google these days. It's reporting solutions from Google, Solution Gallery. So if you click on this link, you can find insight about, you can find uh, insights very quickly about your online project and your online marketing uh, with the help of different, different options which Google provides. It could be custom reports, it could be dashboards, you can select uh, the business objective, you can see, you can select uh, what you would like to see in these reports and you will be provided with the custom pre-made reports. It's very easy, quickly and you will be able to access these kind of reports anytime you want. So for today that's all and uh, now I think that Anne will add more. Uh, for, uh, on my part I would like to thank you for being here and thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Helen. Uh, and before we move to a Q&A section, I would like to offer a special bonus to our loyal audience. Uh, this is a free SEO and conversion rate optimization audit web model. It will look like a quick 10-15 to 15 minutes personalized webinar by one of our Google certified experts. And this audit will help you to find possible ways to increase traffic of your web project and improve conversion rate. The main points covered during the session will be quick usability audit of your existing site, quick SEO audit and review of analytics, audit of PPC campaigns, technical audit, and best practices of conversion rate optimization. Uh, to schedule um, uh, such a personalized webinar, uh, please uh, follow this link. I'm sending it to chat. Uh, that's it. Uh, fill in the form and uh, uh, schedule the session. Or you can also uh, simply reply to any of the emails uh, you are receiving from Promoter. Uh, also, to um, uh, stay tuned uh, with all our content and special offers, please subscribe to our blog, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, thank you very much again. Um, and so, do we have any questions? No, I guess not. Okay, then, thank you very much. Uh, please uh, don't hesitate to contact our uh, speaker directly in case uh, you just think of any questions after we finish the session. And thanks again. Uh, we're looking forward to meeting you online again. Goodbye.